Hey there and welcome. Before we get started, I wanna mention a couple things. First of all, you definitely wanna make sure that you've done advancing the blog. If you did advancing the blog, we're also recommending in there that you do Trijanga 1.9. So those two projects are highly recommended to get this project done because we're really gonna be building off of the, the advancing the broad, uh, blog project itself. We're gonna build off of that to make our final project, which is what we're doing here in the blog API. And if you have familiarity with Django already, you can definitely use another project and jump in. And we're gonna be doing the Django REST framework. So we actually have other Django REST framework stuff. One is based off of our e-commerce site, and then one is based off of this ServeUp membership site. So these two are other kinds of Django REST framework API projects, but this one in particular, we're doing it for our blog project. So that's something that is very important to understand that we definitely go into depth with the Django REST framework even more so in those other projects than what we'll be doing here. What we're doing here is specifically for the blog and the needs of the blog, blog project. The next thing is you can also watch those two things on YouTube. So join cfe.com slash YouTube. You can definitely watch those two projects and I highly recommend that you do it. Now, as far as getting questions answered, on the video itself is the best place to ask those questions. Um, and I highly recommend that you do. And also I challenge you to answer questions for other people. Even if it's not the correct answer, it will help you understand the concepts a little bit better if you're trying to solve the problems for others as well, even if you don't have those problems yourself. Trust me, you get a lot better answering those questions just as I have. Okay, so now the next thing is, where do you actually have reference for the code? So we're gonna be creating code throughout this. And if you've been following Coding for Entrepreneurs, you would know that we actually put all the code on GitHub. That is joincfe.com slash GitHub will take you to our main GitHub page and you'll see all of the related code under repositories. So in this video right now, we are gonna be downloading the advancing the blog code to start our blog API project. That's all we'll be doing from here on out. So if you actually did come from advancing the blog, the remainder of this video, you won't need to watch. Um, and we are taking a slightly different um, approach to advancing the blog. Um, in advancing the blog, when we did that one, we actually used Git. And this one, we're gonna download the zip file. And we're gonna be going off of lecture 27. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna jump into lecture 27. The reason we're using lecture 27 is to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because if advancing the blog, if there's new videos or lectures added to it, we don't wanna confuse you at all with how the code's going. So this is the one we're gonna be going off of. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and download the zip file here. So the zip file is the actual entire repository. So it's all the code that's right here. And it's, it might take a minute for, for it to completely download. Um, but once it does, we can go ahead and open this up. And what we see here is inside of our downloads, we have advancing the blog. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into the desktop. And now again, here it is. And it has this long, like basically uh, character string that is in it. And the reason that's there has to do with the commit. It has to do with the fact that it is not the regular advancing the blog, right? It's actually lecture 27. Because if you downloaded this one, you would not see all of those numbers. So I do have this old blog um, virtual environment that's already set up, which we're not gonna be using. We're gonna be using advancing the blog, that one. Um, so I'm gonna call this folder, I'm gonna rename it as blog-api, um, just to separate the two. Again, if you're building off of advancing the blog, you can combine them, there's nothing wrong with that. So now let's go ahead and open up the Sublime project itself. Notice it's already in there for us exactly the way we want it to be. Um, there is a big difference between this one and the one we had before, which was the fact that the virtual environment stuff is not here. So let's go ahead and get the virtual environment going as well as installing the requirements. I'm gonna open up the terminal and go into the desktop where I just put that project and we're gonna CD into blog-api. And of course, if I list everything out, or DIR if you're on Windows, um, list everything out, I see this stuff in here. And we are gonna create a virtual environment for this project in particular by doing virtual ENV, period. Now, if you haven't done any of this stuff before, definitely go back and watch some of our other projects because this would lose, you'd get lost here if you didn't do those things already. So now we're gonna go ahead and activate it. Um, of course, Windows, um, you are gonna activate it slightly different than this, and that is dot slash scripts slash activate, Mac and Linux users, of course, it's source activate. 
Um, so now that we've got this activated, we want to install the requirements that came with this project. So if I click on the requirements text, I see that we have Django 1.9, Django Crispy Forms, Django Markdown, Django Page Down, Markdown 2. We have a lot of stuff that's in the requirements that we are going to use. So let's go ahead and do pip install r requirements.txt. And this should install all those requirements for us. Again, this is something you would have already have done. Um, if you get this error, permission denied stuff, that's okay. Um, don't worry about it too much. Um, if you really want to understand why, it has to do with using sudo and um, just general site permissions. So you could do sudo pip install and do that where it installs it on your entire computer. But we're just worrying about doing it on our virtual environment. So that's what I'm gonna leave it as. Um, so, and it also notice it does say it successfully installed all the things that we needed. It didn't, didn't give us any errors other than what we see here. Cool, so now we've got our requirements done, but the thing that should note is it says Django 1.9. Now we've talked about versioning before, but we wanna get at least the latest version of 1.9. Do not go beyond 1.9. I highly recommend that you don't, only because everything else that's related to this is gonna be very important. So Django 1.9 is what we're gonna be going off of, but we want the latest version of it. So we'll go to djangoproject.com and we see that the latest release is 1.9.5. So let's go ahead and install that. We'll do pip install Django equals equals to 1.9.5. Press enter. This of course will uninstall the old version and uh, um, basically upgrade or install the newer version, which is not that much different, right? There's just bug fixes and anything that's majorly changed will be in another version, right? So version 1.10 or um, you know, version 1.11 or something like that, that would be the next thing that would actually happen with Django would be those big changes there. Cool, so now that we've got that, we wanna actually look in the Django REST framework. So quick Google search will take us to the Django REST framework and we're gonna click on installation and we see a few things that actually we need for the Django REST framework itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all of this stuff in our virtual environment because these are the installations we absolutely need. All right, so now that we've got that, let's do pip freeze again. And we see that we have the Django REST framework. So these are all of the versions that we are wanting to work with going forward. If you don't stick with these versions, you might run into some issues. Um, cool, so there's that. And now what we wanna do is open up our folder again. And I'm gonna delete all of the old stuff just inside of SRC, and that is the database. We wanna get rid of the database. We're not using that old database. And then we also wanna get rid of the migrations. So inside of comments, we're gonna get rid of these migrations here. And then inside of posts, we are gonna get rid of these migrations as well. Um, this step is not necessary. You don't have to delete all this old stuff, but we wanna start from scratch so we can see the REST framework in action a lot more. And now that we've got that, let's go ahead and change into SRC and run Python manage.py make migrations and then python manage.py migrate. Cool, so now that we've got that, we are gonna create a super user. And I'm gonna use CFE, no email address, and just some whatever password, and we're gonna run the server again. And if we go to our server, localhost, we now see that we have our project here um, notice that we can log in, we can register, we can do all the things that we did in advancing the blog. Um, there, are, of course, are a lot more features to this than what we see here, but we actually need to make content for in order for that to work, um, which is something we'll do very, very soon. All right, so thanks for watching the setup process. Um, now we'll actually start jumping into doing the Django REST framework stuff. If you have any questions on what we did so far, please let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, let's keep going.